Today, we're gonna go through a very simple scalp that happened yesterday on the charts using the one minute. But in order to be able to take that, you have to be aware of how order flow works, how market structure works, and how supply and demand works, as well as using multiple timeframes as your confidence. It's also gonna demonstrate a little bit of why it's important not to be greedy when you're trying to trade because of all these confluences put together. Personally, I didn't take this trade. I'd marked it up and then I got distracted with a phone call. So I didn't actually place it, but then when I got back off my phone call after about an hour, I saw that I should have taken profit and taken 10% out of the market. These things happen on a daily basis, so I wasn't sweating it too much, but I was a little bit annoyed because I was on a losing streak at that point. So it's, uh, yeah, I'd rather have taken a profit, but hey, I didn't. The, the area which I'm, I'm gonna be pointing out to you is literally just over here. But before we get into that, we're just gonna go through some basics of trading here. This is looking at the H4. I'm just gonna jump up to the daily quickly and demonstrate the direction. We currently have chalk up the top and boss down the bottom. Ideally, you wanna be targeting boss, okay? So the flow of the market is heading down on the, on the daily. We had been zigzagging up for a couple of weeks and we'd reached an area where there was obviously some sort of supply coming into the market and we dropped off quite tremendously. We were on a recovery leg, I think at the time, uh, or we'd just gone past the recovery leg, but we ended up reacting from a area of supply coming in. So we'd rebalanced the area on the daily and on the H4, we'd actually reacted from this point of interest, which we'd marked out at the start of the week, which was an inside bar. Okay, so we'd worked our way in, uh, been zigzagging around, and we finally had, uh, I want to say this was red news happening here um, last Friday to drive the market down. We ended up getting chalk down here. Now, a lot of people are going to say, you've had chalk, you've had chalk in a higher time frame. That's absolutely fine. But don't forget that the overall flow of the market is heading down. Okay, the higher time frames are heading down. The weekly is heading down. The daily is heading down. Um, this is only going to be short term up to the next higher time frame, which is the daily. Okay, so even though the H4 has um, chalked over here, we're not necessarily looking to go long because we know that we're facing a lot of um, resistance once we get up here. We didn't quite reach it. We didn't quite fill that gap, but we leveled the kind of area, if that makes sense. So bear that in mind. And then the H4 side to tail away, obviously afterwards. Nonetheless, you, you couldn't have held this trade because of where it was placed, but we had a really decent sell off towards the end of the week. Dropping down to the M15 to understand what had really been happening. I'll get back to where the trade was. Um, the market started moving up and all that I could see really was just this huge amount of space, okay? So this was a red news event which had happened, I wanna say at CPI if it was Wednesday. I can't remember off the top of my head, but basically we saw this takeoff, absolutely went boom, which is good. Um, but then we start to tail off. We didn't get an official chalk on the M15, okay? We had a internal chalk occur once we had the breakdown here, but that was enough for me. Pay attention to this inside bar which has formed here because if I go back to the H4, it's exactly the same formation as to what this whole move has stemmed from, okay? So look at this uh, blue box up here. It's exactly the same formation. It's another sell-off inside bar, another sell-off. We've had a, a retest of the area, creating a little bit of liquidity above to retest it, retest it again, retest it again, and then finally drop off. So using that same kind of, it's one of my favorite patterns in trading, but it usually comes after a sell-off or a big breakout. Okay, so we just had exactly that again. Um, so that's that's a key area which I'm expecting price to come back to to retest in the future. Um, I don't think it has just yet, to be fair. But anyway, price was working its way down and I just expected, because I didn't have too much time available um, on Thursday, so yesterday morning, uh, meetings literally all day. So price had come up, it had swept the liquidity above here, okay, so just bear in mind it has swept the liquidity with this little red doji right here and started selling off again. Now, there was obviously a little bit of liquidity under here to be taken, but I knew just to take my profits just at the low, all right, so I just wanted to be able to take profit at the low, and if it kept on going without me, absolutely fine. Dropping down to the one minute, because I literally just didn't have time, I wanted to try to get a bit more of a precise entry. I had all of this to contend with. Price had worked its way up and we ended up getting chalk on the M1. Okay, so M1 chalk occurred here. You got internal chalk to be fair. Um, it was a little bit higher. We got the sort of like internal kind of up here, main kind of chalk, but the main structure broke right here, okay? Had a, a fairly decent sell-off along with a convincing sell-off. 
had price go up, it mitigated this last sort of order block up here. So if I highlight this, the order block that I'm talking about is here. We've mitigated it. I've missed it. I haven't got that. Um, and then we created this rejection candle. Price had gone up. It mitigated the highest point just before that order block. So the orders are transferred from here over to here and then transferred into this green candle, okay? I'm not a massive fan of this green candle because it's the opposite direction as to where I want the trade to go. However, it is an order block, okay? It's got imbalance after it, it's had the mitigation. It hasn't had a sweep, but it's part of a sweep structure. It's also mitigated this key kind of area before we had a drop off. Um, it seems to be ticking all the boxes. The M15 is down, the H4 is down, the daily looks like it wants to go down and the weekly is heading down. So it's in all the directions, which is good. Now I left, basically I just left it about here. Um, yes, it's a one pip stop loss. So if you're using a, a prop firm or something like that, you might wanna use a stop loss, which is a little bit further away like that and get like a six and a half hour trade. But for me, I use IC Markets. The link is below if you wanna try and use the, the practically zero spreads, um, good commission, zero spreads. I use them for scalping all the time, never failed me. So effectively, I just left it. Now, when I came back to the charts a couple of hours later, uh, well, like, yeah, maybe a couple of hours later, it had already been, it, it, it had taken profit, basically. It came down and it hit it all, almost perfectly. Can't stop the chart, there we go. It hit it almost perfectly because the target was just gonna be a break of this structure. Look at that for accuracy. Okay, literally came down, tapped it by 0 0.1. There's a 10.09 R trade, all right? It's really simple. Um, I don't really need to go through too much more detail. I've just come off a scalping session within FTR. Uh, I was live trading, sharing my screen, just did three hours, and my charts looked like this, just to uh, give you an idea. So 15 minute, one minute, uh, this was the 15 second and the five second over here, okay? So I scalp, um, I'll do it in the group when I've got time. I don't always have time, uh, but today I did have a little bit of time in the afternoon. Just wanna try and go to the live charts. Um, I have cleared everything off my screen, so there's nothing else there at the moment. But this is essentially what you're looking at. And if you're thinking also, like it's late on a Friday session, yeah, the market didn't move more than 10 pips, I guess, in the range, but I was, uh, I was entering with a 0 0.5 stop loss and showing it as I was doing it, which was really good fun. So if you guys wanna be able to join FTR and trade alongside people like me, uh, there's multiple traders in the group like me with the same level of knowledge and experience, possibly even better traders than me, join us. You know? Anyway, catch you in the next one, cheers.